Nobody cares about performance. Those were the words from the great Volodya Dolshenko, the Kotlin IntelliJ plugin team lead, when talking about the Kotlin plugin's performance at KotlinConf 2023. Similar to me right now, he said this very well expecting plenty of disagreements from the audience and yep, nobody cares about performance. Nobody was happy to hear this from the Kotlin IntelliJ plugin's team lead's mouth. However, and quite unsurprisingly, he made a good point from there and followed up with, until it bothers you. Have you ever wondered what is going on when using a for each to loop over all elements of a given list instead of just using a regular loop over all indices to get the element? It allocates an iterator, which yes, sure, provides some safety, but has to check for concurrent modification on each iteration. Let's measure how much this additional safety costs us and when to use an optimized fast for each implementation. For this, we just create a simple main function where we create a mutable list of elements that we populate with 100,000 elements. Let's measure the time it takes to iterate over all of them using the measure time function and calling for each equally. Let's also measure the duration it takes for us to do the same thing by just using a regular for loop where we just go from zero until the list size by getting all elements this way. Now let's try to execute this code and yes, the for each is massively slower than the for loop. We can see that it goes from 1.8 milliseconds down to 1.1. There's just one catch here which is that it is all nonsense. Most of it is wrong or misleading at best. I picked this example because I have done this mistake, proposing a potential performance benefit by creating a fast for each method. Don't believe me? We can go back to our original code and replace the fast for each implementation with the very same for each call. Now let's rerun that. And surprisingly, there is still a performance benefit and our alternative, Despite being the same implementations, suddenly still seems to be faster. What's up? We have done one of many, many possible mistakes when measuring performance. There's a lot going on when launching a fresh JVM. Let's give the JIT some time to warm up and optimize this code before we even start measuring it. As a first attempt, let's try to call this for each 1000 times before we even start measuring it. We can execute it and we can see that it's closer. Now doing it 10,000 times before we start measuring will actually yield some results that are pretty close. But still, the warm for each results in 1.6 milliseconds, but we have seen the for loop performing significantly faster at 1.2 milliseconds. I have one or two more ideas why our initial measurements showed these results. Maybe the JIT compiler optimized these empty loops Maybe the for each call did some unboxing of this int where the empty loop did not. Getting performance measurements is a science, which gets me to the main point of this video. Use a benchmarking framework. We can use Kotlin X benchmark to do the heavy lifting for us. For this, we first load the Kotlin X benchmark Gradle plugin. We then uh, add the dependency to the Kotlin X benchmark runtime. And finally, we have to declare the benchmark target. If we want to reuse the main compilation, we should just create the main target. Next, when creating the benchmark, we need to set the benchmark up by um, configuring it using the Kotlin X benchmark annotations. For our benchmark measurements, we want to use the average time mode. We want to decide for some warm up and measurement iterations. And we want to use this class, this for each benchmark, as the benchmark state. We can use the add setup annotation to set up the benchmark initially. We also create a list with 100,000 elements. In order to create the benchmark for our implementations, we can create a new function annotated with add benchmark, and we can start by creating our benchmark for our for each function. Note, in order to avoid the compiler optimizing away empty blocks of code, we could either make sure to return some value from this function, ensuring that the code needs to actually be executed, or we can use a black hole and call into this black hole, 
making sure that this particular piece of code can never get optimized away. Second, we can create the benchmark for our for loop. We also use a black hole to make sure that our for loop is not actually optimized away. And we iterate over the entire list. Let's now execute our benchmarks. By the way, I sped up this video by a factor of 10. And what a surprise, the for each and the for loop basically do perform the same. What can we learn from this? The first thing is benchmarking is fun. You might have a lot of theories why a certain piece of code might be fast or why it might be slow, but most of the times the benchmarks might not support your theories, so make sure to test them. And the second is benchmarking is hard. Even if you do use a benchmarking framework, you might get things wrong. For example, I used the black hole for this for loop examples. Most of the code on benchmarks would theoretically just sum the values instead of using a black hole. Maybe using this black hole would not have been the right choice. There's a lot to learn and there's a lot of fun to be had when learning about benchmarks. So as always, have fun with Kotlin.